Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. Week 3 NFL picks against the spread. Survivor, yeah, that's still going. Round 2, no one got eliminated last week. We're riding hot with Survivor. And of course, free money teasers, super locks, game previews, and a cuss corner mini halfway through the show. Reminder to smash the like button to the episode. Gently caress the sub to Mayo Media Network YouTube channel button. If you're listening to the audio podcast, always leave a rating and review. Always helps us out in huge ways. The Listener's League on DraftKings now officially open. Link is down in the description. 3,500 spots this week. It's already filling up super quickly. Filled by Tuesday or Thursday, sorry, last week. So go reserve your spot right now. Run thesims.com slash mayo to get yourself 10% off. And the newsletter you want to watch this show before it's actually released, easy stuff. Get the link in the newsletter. That newsletter comes out on Tuesday evening. That's free to join. So if, if you do anything with the newsletter, that's probably the one to do it with. Jeff Feinberg is on the line. This is three days of Feinberg in a row on Mayo Media Network. What's going on, dude? Yeah, a little overkill, uh, maybe. <laughs> three days in a row, week three, Pat. Try not to think. I know who these teams are, that they still might be who we think they are. Uh, and not to lose all my money. That would be great. And hopefully I'm not taking a dirt nap on Sunday either. The greatest golf upset of all time. But other than that, I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, if you miss the Sunday night live show that we do every single week, Jeff was our guest. More on that in a second. And we did our President's Cup breakdown as well. That's all on the Pat Mayo Experience audio feeds and up on Mayo Media Network. Highly recommend the Sunday evening shows. They're live. They have a they have a good energy to them. Uh, live in the studio is Tim Andacust. Tim Andacust. That is uh, not my name. On the Sunday show, obviously, uh, as people can see, you are not in studio with me right now. But, you know, having a live studio audience, Tim, I feel like really ratchets up the energy. Oh, it's great. You can feed off that energy. There's interplay to be had. Uh, it makes everything better. It's just that's the way it works. We do. The reason the sitcoms forever used to film in front of a live studio audience. There was an actual genuine reason for that. And it was because the actors actually perform better that way. Do you have any data to back that up? It goes back to Shakespearean times. It goes back to ancient Athens. These things were designed to be performed in front of audiences. Uh, that, that Again, that there was something about the process of being watched and feeding off crowd energy that actually provides much better performances. It's as old as time itself. Yeah, it's that, that there's energy. There's literally no debate on that subject. Well, there's there's the, that with, with no with the... no scientific data to back it up. Tim, absolute right. Don't, I mean, don't I just even provided I just provided it, bulletproof evidence. That that, that, that is, not evidence. that that's just, <laughs> is not evidence. That's just it is evidence. It's not evidence. Literally evidence. It's, it's not literally. It's just evidence. you. It's just you saying there things. Are, how, how come? No, no. How do you know? I just that said do you know? Indisputable. Do you know? Freaking disputable. Do you know why that they filmed it in live studio audience? Do you know why? There's all kinds of reasons why. Because one of the principal reasons was for the reactions. But that's but, just how it was. But why didn't they use the reactions from the live studio audience? Why did they always pump in a laugh track? Sometimes the laughter didn't quite hit the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, that is one of the reasons. I mean, as someone who's read a ton of books on show business, I can tell you that's exactly how it is. What would you say your favorite books on show business are exactly? A lot of them are, I like biographies of actors and actresses. That's what I really like. <laughs> For example, the new Mel Brooks book is fantastic. I recommend everybody go out and buy the new Mel Brooks book or pour it from your local library or whatever and read it. It is fantastic. Chad, it is that studio audience that got Tim to take his Jumbo Jets hat off his head and start flying it across the studio desk. <laughs> it is. Well, if people missed the Sunday night show, they wanted to see the conclusion of the Mike Williams shoey bet, and we did it on that show because Jeff was live, but if you missed it, here it is. If you're not watching. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tip it higher, higher. Oh, he's doing it. Woo! <laughs> Finish it off, by the way. There you go. There you go. Killing it. You were practicing all week, weren't you? You were practicing. Don't Woo. lie. 
<sighs> Good job, Tim. Thank you, Jeffrey. Do you still have a buzz on from the, the diet crystal Pepsi? People are saying it was the greatest crystal Pepsi shoey in the history <laughs> of humanity. And uh, who am I to disagree? You I, look like you'd taken a shoey before. Your form no, was fantastic, Tim. I appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, just, I guess I'm a natural. What can I say? Uh, losing bets? Well, that is certainly true. Many, that is a skill that I possess. Many said, and this was just beyond one or two people, I probably got about seven or eight comments about this, either texted me, sent to me, Twitter comments, whatever it might be, that it really did look like you were holding like a chalice and you were taking the sacrament. Yeah, it, it's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but uh, maybe it's just the nature of the way that shoe was shaped that it was conducive to that. I don't know. But uh, I did a great job and uh, I was fun. I was fun to pay that bet off. It was. I deserved it. It, it, it was a nice I moment. It. And Jeff, these are the types of things that people can see. You you were on episode two, week two of Sunday night, but you even watched the first one. It had a good vibe. Yeah, good vibe. And, you know, I don't, some people might have liked it. Some people were probably annoyed by it. But I was sweating that Cardinals game, which was my <laughs> super lock big <laughs> through the end of the show. I wasn't expecting it, nor I think you were for a game to be going that late uh, into that 7 uh, p.m. Eastern hour. But. Yeah, that was a real sweat, real, real money, and it sort of tied the turn or turned the tide on my entire um, Sunday, truth be told. Yeah, I mean, realistically, the main reason that you should tune into Sunday Night Live with us, because it happens before Sunday Night Football, and then we'll just ask Tim who's not going to score the first touchdown, Jeff, and then bet on that person and cash tickets. Un unbelievable. The amount of layers to Tim's last week or <laughs> just in that show alone uh, I know Rob, who was sort of the mind behind the Custies, that, that's going to be one that I think has been triple starred to just sort of uh, for the recall wheel. Well, let's look at last week and see how we did. The big winner was a tie between myself and the newly found coin. It was like underneath something over there. Both 11 and 5 against the spread last week. That brings the coin. It's back to back 11 and 5 weeks for the coin to start the year. <laughs> up to 22 and 10 against the spread through two weeks. I'm 19 and 13. Jeff goes 8 and 8. He's now 17 and 15. The only one below 500. Tim, that's you. 14 and 18. And you lost your super lock with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, it breaks my heart. It took the most, as we know, statistically, the most unlikely comeback that we've seen in 20 years for me to lose that. So, so be it. Uh, I got mine right. No. For the second. Were... What is it? It didn't. It. They were already losing, weren't they? It wasn't it a six and a half point spread? Yeah. It start. That whole thing begins with the missed extra point. As, as Chubb crosses the goal line, that is becomes the most difficult uh, comeback in NFL history. So if they make the extra point. No, the garbage the time touchdown, it's the it's the onside kick into that quick drive to get the winning one. The garbage time touchdown we see every Sunday. You can't quantify the c losing the spread as, or covering Look, as you the You guys magic. were already so wrong about the Jets being in A block on sports TV on Sunday. Do you really want to relitigate again? How unlikely the Jets comeback was, or uh, are we done with that? You it, got one midnight showing by Wingo. It was the lead story in PTI as well. It was the comebacks was the lead story on PTI, and the Jets and how, were the first what one order they did talked they about. Talk about those comebacks. Well, they talked about them all in unison, and the first one they actually fully discussed Jets. If you don't think I watched, I watched. <laughs> it's Victory Week. When it's Victory Week, we are soaking it in. We don't get many. So we and in that we in a September victory week is like snow in July. You never. Well, how see many it. Reddits did you hit then? Uh, several, several. I was having fun. I had to avoid a couple because you know I don't need to be in there right now. But for the but but I, I had a lot of fun. Raiders Reddit was a lot of fun. Chargers <laughs> Reddit was a lot of fun. They took glee in that Raiders loss like you wouldn't believe. Why are you like? I don't think you should annual like weekly show up in Chargers Reddit and report <laughs> to me what's going on there. That like that's just totally unnecessary. Uh, it is unnecessary because I know you're also monitoring it. So no, like I'm not monitoring it. And I don't think you need to report to me what the lowest common denominator of the fan base is talking about. Well, you realize that now you're just guaranteeing that that's probably what's going to have to happen now. When I see fun stuff, I'll have to report back. Jets Reddit was electric. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun this week. People were having fun. 
Uh, well, your fun did not go over to the free money picks. You're now 0-2 no. for the year. Two of the teams that you teased lost outright after teasing them down. Um, that brings your lifetime record to 15-106, and 15-105. I'll check back. We had, we had some dispute on what that is. I have to look back. I can't remember if I punched it in or not. Anyway, that was last week. We're here to talk about this week. And what a Thursday night game. We got to kick things off. Steelers at Browns. The spread is down to four and a half. It was five and a half. I think it opened at six when we discussed this on Sunday. But now Miles Garrett has a neck injury, and apparently that's worth a full point. Uh, the total is 38. I couldn't like this game more from a betting perspective, Jeff. I love the Steelers. Like, just keep keep hanging. Keep making Jacoby Brissett a favorite by more than a field goal and see how that turns out for the sports books. Pittsburgh is going to muck up this game. The Browns, like, aren't that good anyway. And if they don't have Miles Garrett, even better. So, Steelers for me, plus four and a half. I'm going to wait on this because I think that he does play. So, by the closer we get to Thursday, if he's announced in, this goes back up to five, five and a half, and then I'll probably do a sprinkle. I mean, I'll put, a, like, a real bet in on the spread, and then I'll sprinkle on the money line as well. I don't love it as much as you, but it kind of feels like Steelers are nothing with the number, a typical AFC North game that doesn't involve a good quarterback. It's hard to imagine it not just sort of being close. What a bad loss for um, the Browns after, I guess, a lucky win or a big win the week before. But in this 11-game period, they are in no position to be losing what I would call, and you could you could fight this comment, they were in no position to be losing what felt like a ceiling Brissette game. I could be a Jets apologist sometimes who's not actually a Jets fan, although some people close to me and you guys will dispute that, that I sometimes am a closeted Jets fan, nothing to do with Tim. You're not closeted about that whatsoever, by the way. You're a pretty open Jets fan. <laughs> I just enjoyed when the Chargers were going 1-15, in 15, how they would scrap it up and, you know, beat Miami on Monday Night Football all the time. I can't, I can't <laughs> deny that. Um, but, but. The Jets' defense, like, we, I was worried about Flacco in the offense. I thought their defense, and I liked the the pieces, would be capable. And they were letting Brissett make plays on the second level, like extending plays, plays off script. Jacoby should not be doing that. Jacoby's dropping dimes in, like, the corners of end zones. They're in no position to have lost that game. So, woof. And uh, Pittsburgh got... Yeah, I'm taking the points with Pittsburgh. Trubisky sucks. You feel like a, a turnover will probably alter this one. This is a game that's going to be decided by one or two plays. It's like most games, I want to be on the right side of it. I think it's Pittsburgh. I, I think that's totally the thing. And Trubisky might throw the game away and the Browns end up covering. However, that might go, Tim. But I don't even think Trubis Trubisky just has to have a normal Trubisky game. And I think they cover this spread. It'll be like yeah. thir 13 to 10. <laughs> There's a clean sweep, and I absolutely adore the under. I think the, the, there's too many points on that board for this. Clean I, sweep in the under, please. I, I would like to see the work on this. I remember seeing it a few years ago. I don't know if this has changed since COVID or now that people are just far more acclimated with Thursday night football, but the overs with two crappy offenses in the Thursday night game tended to hit a lot more often because there would just sure. be horrible quarterback play, which would lead to like pick sixes and just pe teams sure. were so wildly unprepared that special teams defenses started scoring and the over started hitting. That's all very reasonable. Uh, I am going to take Cleveland though. Even oh, sorry, sorry, P Pittsburgh. Sorry, I'm taking Pittsburgh. It does seem like 90% of the Thursday night games are in division. So there is a level of familiarity, which makes preparation more conducive and travel, I guess, um, m more conducive. But you're not wrong, Pat, as to that, like the, the feel of the Thursday night game flow consistently. The only thing I would say is, do you, with because there's we speculated about this on Sunday night whether they'd make the move from Trubisky to Pickett. Obviously, on the short week, that's not going to happen. But even if the Steelers win and Trubisky plays terrible, like they might still make this move, right? I would be shocked if they were two and one, they'd make a move. I just don't see Tomlin doing that. I, I just don't. I don't. Trubisky, when what when you watch all the games at once, like a lot of people, um, you know, do nowadays. 
there is probably not a less pocket aware quarterback than Trubisky. Well, Matt it, Ryan. Oh, I. That's that's not a fine. You're right. That's not a class you want to be in. But guys are like are are hunting him down, and he doesn't seem to feel them ever. Uh, and it's concerning, but they'll have my money this week against the Browns. Yeah, it, this this bet has nothing to do with betting on Trubisky. It's just betting on that Cleveland's just not that good. Neither is Pittsburgh. So it's probably going to be a close game. The best aspect of this game, though, truthfully, is that Cleveland running game. Sure. The best aspect of this game is that it's probably going to be like a two-hour and 45-minute game when you get to sleep at a decent hour. Both these teams are going to run the ball a ton. And we're gonna get out of, we're gonna get out of dodge quickly. How pumped were you for the seven fifteen Eastern start for Monday Night Football? The greatest thing of all time. <laughs> it, it, it's great. Football game should be over by like ten forty five Eastern at the at the latest. That that's that was heaven, absolute heaven. Uh, I miss it. I loved the doubleheader last night and love the way they did the doubleheader. Wish it was everywhere. I'd get rid of Thursday Night Football to have the doubleheaders almost simultaneous Monday Night Football. I would agree with that. Obviously, uh, Amazon paying thirty kajillion dollars for Thursday night football is not going to happen. Which no, I, no. I, I, I love that. I loved it running simultaneously. Like we all know. I mean, we all don't know how, but I mean, I can watch both games at once. It's fine. It's easy. There were various TV channels that were literally doing that for you. Oh, were there? They had the boxes side by side on the screen. Oh, see, even better. So it would help people like you out. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's get to Sunday. Kansas City is at Indianapolis. Indianapolis is a six and a half point home dog. Yes, they still have Matt Ryan at quarterback, so that's problematic. 49 and a half is the over under. Jeff, it's the extended week that we haven't seen the Chiefs play since last Thursday. The Colts are in shambles, a tie with the Texans, slaughtered by the Jags. When did the Colts turn the switch and they're the Colts again? And is it this week when everyone is betting on Kansas City? Well, I've actually seen a lot of people coming in early on uh, on the Colts pretty who? hard. Who? who? Who's coming in on the Colts really hard? And is it like the three sh- really sharp people you know? Because I can assure you, Johnny Public is not coming in hard on the Colts at less than a touchdown. Yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> sorry. I want to say it's actually sharp guys who have like eight and two, nine and one super contest uh documented records replying to Johnny Public saying, I can't wait to bet the call co- uh the Chiefs. Chiefs said anything, yada yada yada. Um, I'm actually really disappointed that as we're doing this show, it is six and a half, Pat. Because I feel like there is no chance that ends up being the number. Colts plus seven, maybe even more, ends up being the number. Um, I'm going to, I'm going, I'm crazy. I'm going to take the Colts here. And almost like a desperation will breed brilliance at home for them. As insane as that is. I'm with you. I'm taking the Colts plus six and a half. I know that Tim on the Sunday night show that said the Colts might end up being his super lock. And well, the coin's going with Kansas city. That's pretty smart. I will say the next three games that we are going to talk about are probably going to be the most tease games. Even when you got talk about going through zero, uh, you can get one of them there, but just there's going to be a three team, six point tease with these, this game on the chiefs, the next game, and then the next game with the favorites. And one of them's really going to blow it up. I just, I have bad, I almost like why the only reason, Tim, that I took Jacksonville last week was just like, I have bad vibes about this game and I just am going with Jacksonville. This is going to be the opposite here. I just have bad vibes about it. I'm going to take the Colts to cover. I don't know if they win, yeah. but I think they cover the six and a half. I'm with you. Uh, I said this, my intuition was as much as I hate this Indianapolis team. I think it's trash. Uh, the, shirts, the Colts have to be the right side here. I think you play the Colts or you can't play at all, particularly at six and a half. At six and a half, I mean, you probably could play the Chiefs because, like Jeff said, I think this number is going to get higher. Almost how doesn't it get higher unless real big money comes in in Indianapolis? Uh, yeah, I'll take the take the Colts here. I don't love it. I'm not super locking it. I'm not doing any nonsense with it. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to put it as my super locker or anything like that. But I'm, I'm playing the Colts. There's no doubt. You, you pray that that Colts – injury report is kinder like Leonard has to come back Pittman has to play that receiving core is as bad as advertised 
and, and without Pittman, they are they're they're so screwed. They are so screwed. But uh, Mahomes on the road is a big favorite. I think there's um, the 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 fact is I think he's just five hundred as a uh, let me just. And I believe it's the Colts home opener, too. So five and five against the spread as a favorite of seven or more on the road. Um, so, you know, and we know it's a weird game last week. The Chiefs, full credit to them. They win in an absolute, I'll stomp you on your throat boat race in week one. And then week two, they win a game against a very hungry team who's trying to prove a point and they win not playing their best football. Um, you know, Mahomes could have had a couple of turnovers he didn't they make huge plays with with depth players on defense and they win a huge critical game so they are able to win um they're like a chameleon now maybe this new version of the colts uh, of the chiefs they can win different ways and it's it's really impressive and concerning for a fan of other afc football teams but to tim's point it's it's a home opener I, I just am going to bank on desperation, breeding some level of desperation and embarrassment, really waking up the, the Colts, the chiefs have the Buccaneers on deck. It's so weird to think their look ahead factor in cross conference. But when Tom Brady's involved with a super bowl rematch, maybe just maybe. Okay. Bills at dolphins. Bills favored by Ooh. five and a half points. It opened at Big four screen. points, but then everyone watched on Monday night and now the Bills. Yeah, it's going to be a short week. It's going to be super hot in Miami. The Bills have no secondary left uh, as everyone is now potentially hurt, maybe even on that defense. I have talked to, I've done a few shows with different people so far this week, Tim, and Miami plus five and a half is everyone's favorite bet. I think I so might I be willing to go up to Bills minus 20 on this. I think the Bills absolutely curb stomp the Dolphins. Well, this no, I, I think that's almost impossible to How imagine. It, that really? You, 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 don't, you, you don't think the Bills, the Bills, I don't think the, the Bills, no, the, the, hold, don't. hold on. The Bills just beat the Super Bowl champions by like 400. Yeah. And they beat your Super Bowl winning team from this. They were the number one seed in the AFC last yeah, year yeah. in a non-competitive yeah. game. <laughs> But I they, think given but they couldn't the, do it to no, the no. Dolphins. Given the nature of the the secondary and the receivers the Dolphins have, curb stomping I don't think is on the cards. Um, I'm going to take the Bills as well. I think the Bills will cover. Uh, do I think the Bills can win this by 14? No, I think that's I think it's a very, very, very unlikely outcome. I don't see that that, that see that as possible. I think this game is going to be played within 10 points, sort of thing, because I think the Dolphins can have proven. That they can obviously they can score in big bunches if they're having the receivers uh, with opportunities against a weakened secondary or a poorly schemed secondary to take advantage. If there isn't the manpower to slow down Hill and Waddle, the game cannot be a blowout by definition. It doesn't seem like it's a possibility. I think the Bills win by ten to thirteen points. Uh, that would be an alternate spread, like you would like to, but to say it's going to be a blowout. Man, I just think that is in, that's incredibly unlikely. Uh, yeah, Do, yeah. The Dolphins are 2-0, Tim. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. No, no that they are. Uh, I don't love them in this game either, but I think you're over-exuberant about Buffalo in this game. It's a divisional game. It is in significant heat, and the Bills have some real problems at a spot where the Dolphins are a more talented team. So it's a concern. For those of us who are on the I'd like to see Miami lose every game by 500 bandwagon, look at this game and say, actually, I don't think Buffalo, as it stands right now, on the short week beaten up in the secondary is a good matchup for what the Dolphins can do in terms of like keeping it close. It should be a very high scoring, entertaining game like well, I'll say like, you know, I don't know, 38, 28 for the Bills or something. But uh, and we're, we're going to take uh, Buffalo here and the Bills are the first end oh, of a uh, free money parlay. Uh, we're not teasing this week. We've got a, we've got a money line parlay on the go, and Buffalo is is leg one. Okay, so Buffalo Stop minus two twenty five is the first leg of your money line parlay. Here's the difference, Tim and Jeff, for that matter. Who I mean, Tim just mentioned that you know all these divisional games are always close. You know who doesn't play close games in the Josh Allen era? The Bills and Dolphins. It's never close. The Bills absolutely wreck them every single time. And yeah, I see the concerns about the secondary with Hill and Waddle and what. 
the, the game-breaking speed that they bring to the table. I'm aware of all that. I, I can see how this goes sideways. But I think the big difference between the Bills and the first two teams that the Dolphins have played, like, anyone who could get to the quarterback was hurt on Baltimore. And frankly, the Patriots did a pretty good job of playing defense. You know what the Bills have done so far? Jeff got to the quarterback and it's not like the offensive line. It's improved in Miami. It's not great. I don't think the two is going to have any time. I don't have a clue about this one. To me, it feels like a game where uh, we could call it the Feinberg special yeah. where the bills win and the dolphins cover. Um, it's the short week. It's the division. It's all those talking points. The one thing I found humorous yesterday is an Dolphin fan in my orbit sort of got excited that last night could be a look ahead game. Like once the Dolphins won on Sunday, that the Bills could have then been considered in a look ahead spot on Monday night football. And I was like, it's the most football horny community in the world with Super Bowl aspirations in their home opener. There's not a chance in hell that the bills would be in a look ahead spot versus anybody uh, versus the Titans. And that sort of bared fruit. Uh, I don't like the dolphins defense, but what did they do last week? They, a huge turnover right at the goal line. It is like their MO the comeback. We pray. We made all that praise last week. I said early, I might've been in the week one show in our final preview show. Playing the Dolphins early will not be fun. Like, you want to have as much tape on this team before you have to play them. Having to play them early on a short week with secondary injuries? I don't know. This game just feels so weird, Pat. Am I insane for debating starting Cleveland defense over Buffalo? Like, Buffalo, I just got to start because they're getting – I mean – They've gotten like 17 and 20 points, and I'm asking if I should start the Browns. Uh, I mean, I, I would Jets last week. I, I would give start, your head a shake, pal. I mean, if you if you, you just look, hope to us, if you look at my six picks and says six touchdowns. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, that's I, I. Okay, I have the Browns ranked at number one this week at defense. I have the Bills at number two, so you're in a good spot. Oh uh, wow, okay. So, so maybe it's not a crazy thought. Oh wow. No, I mean if you want passing attempts against, which you might want to do, listen, I think that both those defenses smash. Buffalo probably has a safer floor in this matchup because of the potential turnovers they can get. I just think it's hilarious that coming into the year, I was the only one I think that really actually liked Miami this season like to us like over with like, you? like this offense and now all and we both love the bills and how good they could be but now tim is like kind of scared that the dolphins are gonna make this competitive game this is a different stratosphere of team for the dolphins to play this is a real step up to the big leagues in ter- terms of competition it would be very sure it it'd be very impressive if they can keep this game close but Buffalo is the rabbit team along with the Eagles right now in the NFL. And they're going to run train here for like six, seven weeks. And then the league will catch up to them. But as it stands right now, I just don't think that Miami really has an answer unless they start throwing up these deep balls again. And all of a sudden Tyreek is magically behind the defense. I just don't see that happening to Buffalo, mainly because I don't think that the Buffalo pass rush is going to allow two of the time to do any of this. I want to highlight McDermott made one of the stupidest challenges any coach is going to make all year. Very weird. He did. He's not that good of a coach. He's lucky that his team is playing well enough that it isn't that important that he's a bad in-game manager, but like he cost them the playoffs last year. He made that dumb decision. Like be on the watch for McDermott. He's, he's apt to make some very curious decisions. Mm -hmm. So in games where it might get close, like you might get a little nervous. I just want to put a pin in that. We can come back to it in weeks when it matters. But like my, that was a very that, concerning challenge if you're a Bills fan. That comeback for Miami with a rookie with I got you know, Pat's kind of swayed me here. I think I'm gonna lay the points with the Bills. I mean, the Bills kind of did what I think in their locker room they fully expected they were gonna do last night. Maybe a little extra whipped cream on it, but I mean, what a vibe in that Miami room post game. Yeah. And now they got their biggest game. Okay. I'm going to take the bills for something to get stupid. Even if it's close, they'll make the play that that covers this thing. Give me the bills. Okay, so Bills, Bills, Bills. Coins going with Miami, and just so you know, Jeff, I have laid real money on Bills minus 16 and a half at 3-1. to one. Oh, yeah. Alternate Bills. 
I could that makes total sense in the in the fashion that the Bills win, they'll win big to their stereotype, which which ends up being like a runaway train. I certainly wouldn't condone teasing the Dolphins. Like you can't tease against the Bills just like you didn't want to tease against the Chiefs a couple years ago. Like that would be the dumbest thing. Cause if it goes bad, it's going to get scary. Yeah. I would think it's weird that you say that because I think you'd be better off. Like if you were doing a teaser piece or a parlay piece that I have more interest in the Dolphins money line than I do in teasing them up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it goes to like the golf thing where you'd bet a guy outright and almost think if you want to bend to miss the cut on the side of that, I don't think that's crazy too. Yeah, like it, I just don't see this game being super close. Like the Bills route or the Dolphins might sneak out a win. Like those are the two <clears throat> edges that I see here. I don't see this being like, oh, yeah, Bills won by a comfortable five. It's like, okay, that seems strange. Um, anyway. I, I'm shocked Tim didn't take a shot at the Dolphin fans who will be attending this football game because he seems to do that, you know, because now they have a game that means something a lot deeper into the season than he thought on Twitter last week. Maybe I'm keeping my powder dry a little bit. Let them enjoy their game in a thousand degree heat. But look, I actually think they're right now. I actually think they were reasonably interesting matchup for Buffalo. And I don't think this game is going to be nearly the blowout that you guys do. I think it's this gonna is be not a game. real money game for me. Like it is for Pat, but this is the game I vote for big screen. Oh, yeah. This, this is, this is I yeah. need to have on the big screen on yeah, Sunday. I think this has got to be our big screen game. Oh, we, I already know the laptop game, so I, I think that we're good with that. <laughs> there's a very yeah, clear I, laptop I game. <laughs> I think there's only one option. Well, maybe two, but really one option. All right, Philly and Washington is up next. Uh, Jeff, do you think that the most common teaser this week is a six-point tease, Chiefs, Bills, and Eagles? Because I think it's going to be. Uh, that seems very possible. I hope, yeah. I guess people don't uh, want to count on my team at, at four o'clock. You're probably not wrong, Pat. People are complaining about how much hype is on the Eagles right now this morning on the internet. And they're blaming like Philly football fan. I don't think it's Philly football fan. I think it's everybody who made their Eagles futures are losing their minds right now. And I guess good for them. I don't know if this is a Super Bowl team, man. I really don't. I wouldn't think so either. Well, but like, no one in the N- no one in the NFC has looked all that good. Yeah, but they, they, I mean, Tampa but, is still the class of the NFC, and we saw that last night by the numbers. They said Tampa's got by far the best advantage to go to the Super Bowl of any team in the NFC. But the Eagles are like number two or three, right? They're playing good, and the NFC East is bad. So, yeah, I think that they're good. I, I think that they're good. I don't think that they're great. I want to see them be behind in games and see how they react to that. It was a lot like the Baltimore stuff that we saw with Lamar a few years ago. We still don't have that answer with that Ravens team of when they're running great, they're awesome. And that's what we saw from Philly so far is that when they're running good, they're unstoppable. But what happens when they get punched in the mouth a little bit? Can they rally in those circumstances? And I I think you kind of need to see that from teams, Jeff, before penciling them and be like, well, they're clearly the best team. Good boy, are they going to win 19-0? (laughs) <laughs> you know that's totally fair but i'm also somebody who sort of tried to pour cold water on the lions and watching last night it was like holy shit maybe the lions are way better than i thought no the lions offense is top notch their defense is terrible well is terrible well, well, what about defense. what about a good like, pass Phil- rush but terrible philly's defense looked good last night but are like is anyone sold that hey philly needs to get a stop they can get a stop no, I really thought that was more of a poor Kirk Cousins performance than a good Philadelphia defense performance, to be honest with you. I actually didn't think the uh, Cousins played all that poorly until the second half. Eh, he didn't look sharp all night. He looked nervous all night. They, they and went then, inside yeah. the 30 four times and got zero points. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that, that good or bad? Like some, said like somebody who had a Bills Vikings teaser. <laughs> yeah, the Vikings just didn't have it last night. That happens. That happens. Yeah. And it was a home opener for Philly. Um, I think Philly does need to be challenged. I don't think the commanders are the team to do it. Um, well, I like the Eagles here, and I'm they're the second part of my parlay. Oh, Philly. Philly money line. Okay, so Philly on the money line is 
minus 250. So you got a minus 250 and a minus. You're building like a Cody Saftic uh, PRP here with some heavy favorites. It's a relatively conservative one. Yeah, it's a four teamer when we get to it. It's a relatively conservative one. What does it pay at the end? Uh, plus 360. Okay, that's not that's not bad. But it's, you need four teams to win in the NFL. That's tough enough. Correct. You were, Correct. Te- you were teasing up points last week and lost two of them. So keep that in mind. Why we're, Why we're making a bit of a change here. Okay. So the, the spread in this game, because I don't think I said that, is Eagles minus six and a half. I think this goes up, Jeff, to tell you the truth. This feels a lot like the Colts scenario to me, where I think that public wants to hammer. That's the weird thing about the Bills game. I feel like the public wants to bet the wants to bet Miami, weirdly enough, and not the Bills, where in these other two games, like Chiefs will smash them, Eagles will smash them. This Washington offense is good after they get their like three picks out of the way. Yeah, uh, Carson Wentz revenge game. Uh, I hate this pick, but I am going to take the Commanders here, yeah. which is gross, and it That's could be half, seventeen yeah. nothing out of the gate. But it's also not a game I'm prepared to put real money on either. I just think. There's way too much love for the Eagles today. I'm not really there like the rest of the world. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to go with the Commanders as well. The Commanders' strategy of just like playing dead for two quarters and then just coming back out of nowhere really lulls teams into a false sense of security. And we'll see Didn't how Didn't they that get a big go on Jacksonville in week one? Like that was just their last week's strategy. Didn't they get a big lead on the Jags and give it all back? No, I, th- I think they got out to a lead. Then they just started getting hammered by the Jags and then they had to come back. I think that's how okay. that went. But their offense, like when Wentz starts flinging it, like they got playmakers on this offense. Yeah, they do. And I'm not sold on Philly's D. I I do think that Philly wins the game, but six and a half seems like a lot. I think this gets up to seven by the time the week goes along, unless it becomes one of those things where it's like, oh, everyone's on Philly. Let's bet Washington. And then it ends up coming back down. But I would, I think I'd rather want the home dog here um in this circumstance so i I just one of these three teams isn't going to cover they're probably not even going to win so i think i'm most confident in the bills so i'll go the other way on the other two baltimore and new england baltimore's a three-point favorite in new england this total is 43 and a half i don't know what the ravens injury report looks like Uh, i can't imagine it's great but if they can get (laughs) some of their secondary back that would prove to be somewhat helpful Uh, The only bet in this game, Jeff, is over Jacoby Myers' receptions. Just watch what Waddle did to the Ravens' defense last week. It was just like, oh, eight-yard slant, seven-yard slant, wide open every time, and they got it to him. That's the only route that Jacoby Myers runs. It may be the only pass that, like, unless Nelson Aguilar makes a spectacular play that Matt Cust can actually complete. I'm taking the Ravens here because I think the Patriots are god-awful. We sort of see this game uh, very similar. There are very few teams I think the Patriots are going um, to have success against this year. They barely were able to contain Pittsburgh. If they get down, I don't know how they would come back. Baltimore off a crushing loss. Uh, Baltimore, easy. Could be my super lock. So Baltimore, Baltimore. Coin is also going with the California Raisins here. Tim, who are you taking? With trepidation, I'll take the Patriots. I don't know. Just feel like the Patriots can squeeze this game. Play it a lot like they played Miami in week one, where you sort of play the game tight between the 40s. I think I'm actually picking a, a, a game where I'm going to get a push. I think that's probably Ravens by three. I think that's probably where the game finishes. Uh, but hesitatingly, I'll take the Patriots, what I think will be an ugly, sloppy yeah, like 17-14, not too dissimilar from the score we saw come out of Fox Bro last week. Yeah, I mean, the, obviously the Steelers play better defense than this current iteration of the Ravens, but, like, the Ravens, uh, I mean, they played Miami, and I mean, well, the Patriots played Miami, and they played the Steelers. And I know that Miami just put up Boku points on the Ravens, and maybe the Patriots can do the same thing. Maybe the Ravens' defense is just broken. But this sort of offense that the Ravens are going to run, I feel like is going to give the Patriots real problems that they didn't see the first two weeks. Maybe. I mean, maybe, but maybe the Patriots' defense is actually decent. I, I will say, and, I, uh, that's probably the best part of their team right now. So I'm going to hinge on that. I'm going to say I think it's going to be close. Uh, you know, the Belichick knows how to play, has played several games against Lamar. They have a lot to tape. Like, I think they'll, it'll, it'll be a close, boring game. Uh, and, and that's what I'll take the home dog, I think, in an interesting little spot. I feel like Jeff teased this a little bit earlier. The Lions are at the Vikings. 
The Vikings are favored by six points here. 53 and a half is the over under in this spot. The Lions in neutral game situations right now, the fastest team in football, Jeff. And they still run the ball a ton. They're just getting up to the line and running plays. 26.29 seconds per play is the fastest just ahead of Carolina. And where does Minnesota comes in? I feel like Minnesota is a bit of a slog. Yeah, they're in the bottom half of the league. They they run their plays six seconds slower than Detroit does, which I really found fascinating based on what the way that their offense is actually constructed and how, you know, O'Connell is supposed to be this like new wonder, hey, wonder kid head coach. I feel like they would have run a faster pace with some of the athletes that they have on offense, but that's just not the case. But you said you may have undersold – Detroit, I know that you love Minnesota. Minnesota was everyone's darling along with the Eagles until the Eagles just pounded them. So I'm guessing you're going with Detroit plus six. Yeah, I'm again, I'm I'm torn in this spot. I hope it could be a good bounce back situation for the Vikings as we did joke last week. And I think a lot of people joked leading into that Monday nighter, Pat. It did feel like a game on the two Eagles Vikings was like the two popular NFC sleeper teams uh you know going head to head early that a lot of people were on and if you are sort of bullish on the vikings like i am you really watch that game confused uh questioning a lot of the defensive strategy by the vikings although they did pitch a shutout in the second half in such a strange (laughs) strange football game but you watch that performance last night and then it sort of leaves you with lots of questions in the sense that you relive week one and you're like, well, in hindsight, for many of the reasons people bet the Vikings, it was such a horrible spot for the Packers uh, in many ways between injuries up front and, you know, just working through things with, with receivers. Jeez. I don't, I hate, I, I'm really scared for the Vikings futures taking a dagger on, on Sunday. I'm going to take Minnesota, but it is very hesitant, and I don't feel comfortable about it. No, I had already written in Detroit for Jeff. Tim, who are you taking? I'm taking the Lions. Too many points. Road team on the road, or dome team on the road. I always love that. In division, too many points. And it's funny, you, you subtract Anthony Lynn, and your offense starts flying. It's interesting how that works. Uh, Detroit's offense has looked uh, has looked effortless. Their defense has problems. Uh, And so the Vikings can and should be able to take advantage of those issues. But, I mean, we have a super tiny sample size, and we have how Minnesota looked against the Philadelphia and how Detroit looked against Philadelphia, and one of them had fight and one of them didn't. Uh, Too many points. Give me the Lions. Lions could very well win this game outright, and don't be surprised if they do. Are they on the money line parlay? No, of course not. This Why? will be a publicly backed underdog. I think so. I, I, I would assume at this number, yes. That's what I was kind of thinking. That is, I mean, Minnesota is on a short week, obviously, after playing the later game on Monday Night Football. And I think that just people's perceptions of how they look at these two teams after last week, I was just kind of shocked that the spread was so wide. And that kind of wants me leaning towards Minnesota, but... I think I'm just going to go with Detroit as well. The, the big thing that stuck out to me from the Monday night game was how Minnesota really couldn't block for Kirk Cousins, which I thought was strange. And I mean, till we watched all that Lions game last week, Hutchinson was just in the backfield every play. He had the Charlie horse at the end, had to go. Dan Campbell says he's going to be okay, but I think they're going to be able to disrupt what Minnesota wants to do offensively. Mm-hmm. Could be terrifying. Um, Minnesota's path to victory is getting Dalvin Cook clicking. Uh, they've got to slow the game down. They can't allow Detroit to have possession after possession after possession. They have the horses to do it, and I think they have the talent. Uh, so I think they have a coach who's smart enough to be able to put those horses in the right position. But I don't know. Just Detroit seems like they're super fun, and I, in part, picking them. I'm part, I like them before the year. Uh, I was steadfast in thinking they're, that they're decent. And Green Bay has, has been utterly uncharming for the first two weeks and look kind of bad. Minnesota has played flat. Detroit's looked by far the best team in that division through two weeks, and so I'm going to stick with them. Bengals at 
the Jumbo Jets coming off a big win. Jets are five-point dogs at home, 44-and-a-half is the over-under in this spot. Bengals 0-2. They got to win, Tim. Oh, yeah. We can't possibly win this game. <laughs> we got no chance. Bengals are on the money line parlay. It was fun. But, you know, look, you know, this is, it was exciting, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, come on. Like, Flacco had a moment of exceptional skill where no one decided to go anywhere within 45 yards. Corey Davis, great. Um, and he threw a really nice pass to win the game to Garrett Wilson. Wilson's legit. Wilson is the real deal. I'm excited for who Garrett Wilson could be. Uh, he has a ton of fantasy, or tons of yards and catches through two weeks. He could be really good when Zach gets back. But yeah, I mean, the Bengals could easily be 2 0, probably should be 2 0, but, and they haven't played their best football. Um, is the Jets' offensive or defensive line going to get home enough to disrupt them? You know, I hope so. I don't know. I just feel like. This is a game I'm hoping they put Sauce on Chase and really test him. Uh, the Sauce is supposed to be this, you know, absolute wonderkind coming out of college as a cornerback. Well, this is what you draft a cornerback fourth overall for is to go against the other team's uh, star wide receiver and say, go away for the game. So um, I'm really excited for this game. I think the Bengals are fine. I'm not worried about that. Like, I'm far more worried about Oakland at 0 2 than I am at the Bengals at 0 2 because, like, that division doesn't look very good. And I'm not too worried about their position as it as it stands. But if they were losing this game, like then then it's a you know there's a siren siren to go off. Plus, a bit of a revenge. The Jets beat the Bengals last year, one of the few games we won. I think the Bengals remember that. Anyway, all that being said, I really like Cincinnati in this game. So we'll lay the lay, lay the number as well. Jeff Tim using the curse to his advantage in this spot. Coin is going to take the Cincinnati Bengals as well. Uh, it's funny. Tim mentioned that putting sauce on Jamar Chase would be a thing. It's funny what we've seen work so far this season is teams are dedicating, if they have like a, a very good cover corner, what they seem to be doing is putting that guy on the number two receiver and just shifting coverage towards the one guy that they're really scared of, saying, hey, you could have all the catches that you want, but you're not getting behind us. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting strategy. Like, we really saw the Bills do that with Cooper Cup in week one, where it's like, hey, we're going to dedicate everything and take Allen Robinson out of this game. Cooper Cup can get what we give him, and you can take it every time, and that's fine. I think that'd be a really interesting strategy to try on the Bengals, because it feels like teams have done that to the Bengals through two weeks. Okay, I love that strategy as, like, strict coaching principle. Uh, like I, I wish the Chiefs had used it on Thursday night. <laughs> completely lock down YR2 with your best, and then you sheer numbers um you know, to take away YR1 by making the the holes to get the football to that player as small as humanly possible. Do you think that the um, word wide starts with the letter Y? <laughs> no, W-I-D, what, 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 what? It's just, it's just asking. Anyway, go ahead. Oh. No, I, I think Y R one and like YR2. Would... Young oh. and the Restless One. Yeah, you said Listen, YR1 you want to you want to play a game? I'll do anybody why why young and the restless trivia. Oh, as really? Young, really? Yeah, as a youngster, I didn't have a TV in in my house. It was on uh you know, no offense, but uh my mom was watching it upstairs, my sister was watching it on one TV, and like the housekeeper was watching it in the basement. I didn't have a TV. The same show was on three TVs. I could tell you anything, tell you anything. Well, no, let's range this like 92 through probably more like 89 through like 98. I could tell you anything about that. Show. So they were all watching the same TV show at the same time on different TV sets in the house. Yes, that is so great. I, I love that. I love that, that they're all like they can't watch it together. God forbid. Everyone has to retire to their corners and watch it on their own. I think that's um, fantastic. Were you, were, were, were you big on passions, Jeff? No, I'm not really familiar with that. It, it, we were a Y in our house, a Newman household, okay? Yeah, I, see, my grandmother and mother loved General Hospital. That was their uh, that was their soap opera. And Another World. That Those are the two that were always on when I was around. My grandmother watched. I've watched so many episodes of Another World anyway. Uh, anyhow, so for all the talk, I do agree with Tim. The Raiders are probably in the most trouble. But the worst loss last week was the Bengals. Worse than the Ravens, 
worse than the worse Browns. Than the Raiders? Worse than the Raiders? Worse than I don't the Raiders. know. They lost to Cooper Rush, and they had all their players. Okay, mm-hmm. so to me, that was the worst loss, and you can argue most impressive win of the week, in my opinion, maybe Dallas, even more so than Miami, not to take away from anyone's anything. As we sit here at this point of the show, the Bengals will be my super lock. Um, I, I watched the Jets allow Brissett to make plays on the like second level plays, extend plays, off script plays from Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, Bengals get off the schneid big. Yeah, yeah and, that, and this should be the sign. The, both, the the, both the, both the Jets ex- fans are on the Bengals. I'm excited for Will, uh, for for yeah, for Zach to get back and you know play with some of the toys and some of the things that's going on there. And credit to Flacco, I made fun of him like a lot of people that was on the Jets last week um, for getting that win. No, this one I think uh, is, could get could get ugly. Sort of like the way Pat sees Miami Buffalo. Uh, yeah, I see this one being a, a route. I like the Jets plus five here. I think the Jets might win this game outright. Cincinnati, not only can they not block, I just finished recording a show. I do it every Tuesday, if people haven't noticed as of yet, but it's called The Huddle. Uh, It's myself and Ross Tucker talking about it. And I asked him, like, straight up, like, what is going on with the Bengals' offensive line? I thought they signed all these guys. It's supposed to be improved. And he said, it's twofold. He's like, one, the Bengals' offensive line coaching is just bad. Doesn't matter, like, what sort of good players that you can bring in there. He's like, and Joe Burrow has to throw the ball. He just holds onto the ball waiting for either guys to get open and he's just there's certain guys that will just immediately give up on the play because they feel a little bit of pressure and it knocks them off their spot and they end up horrible like Daniel Jones for example Burrow's kind of the opposite it's just he gets so used to taking these sacks and not getting hurt I mean when one time he did end up getting hurt it was him rushing the ball so he just he sits there he waits for the pocket to like the very last second and just he just keeps going down. Like he's not doing his offensive line and this offense any favors by holding onto the ball. And I think the Jets might be able to get home and muck this up a little bit. And just until they curb these turnovers, they're going to be live to lose any of these games. And maybe that stops this week. Maybe you guys are right. I am not willing to bet on that. I think the Jets cover the five. As we're speaking... As we're speaking right now, there's a troll account on Twitter that tweeted out, breaking, Odell Beckham Jr. has told the Giants he'd be interested in rejoining the Giants if they bench Daniel Jones. It's not a real account, but people are losing their minds. It's kind of funny. It's a perfectly reasonable, it's a good troll because I believe that story 100% upon hearing it. It, I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds like something that Beckham would say. It seems logical that you wouldn't want Daniel Jones to be your quarterback because he's absolute trash, but... It's just funny. People are like, I can't believe he said that. And everyone's like, it's a troll account, man. Like, calm down. It's like We're a week. We're another horrible Bengals burrow holding the ball, getting sacked five, six times performance away from people calling him the white RG3. Oh, no. He's going to be interviewed by Pat Mayo as a non-athlete on Radio Row. That's going to be a tough scene for Joe Burrow. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a big Burrow guy. I think some of the criticism he's taken... It's kind of unfair. I, I I like to believe the narrative, the narrative that has been creative created around him. Truth be told, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a fan. I think a lot of this has to do too with the Bengals. Like so much expectation were put on the Bengals. They were ten and seven last year, and even their run through the playoffs, like they got a lot of good breaks. They won a lot of close games. Like you take the coin flip it comes up the other way and they lose the first round and they're done and no one thinks that they're all that good coming into the season it's like oh what what a kind of fluky team that they made the playoffs that way and that's just that's not how the narrative went maybe this is maybe this isn't necessarily the team that they are but maybe they're closer to this than the team that lost in the super bowl it seems like they're part of the just pack of teams in the afc clearly um, or their last three games were against aaron donald tj watt and uh, Micah Parsons. And the best three pass rushers were the last three games they played. And they don't play those t- those guys for the rest of the year. Uh, so. I, I was told before the season started, uh, Carl Lawson might be a top five pass Carl, rusher. Carl, look, the Jets are playing good defense. You think they're going to win this game. If they win this game, then you think they'll win the next week against Pittsburgh. Then they'll be three and one. And then, uh, anyway, I, then, I, then I, they I, become I, mathematically favorites to make the playoffs. It's funny because I actually don't. I think they're actually a terrible matchup for Pittsburgh. That's not the type of game that Gee, the Jets. What a shock that we. What a shock. We're playing decently. And week four, we get a team coming off a mini buy. 
Like the first sense that we're starting to play well, Zach gets back. You haven't the first won this green week. shoot. The first green. Oh no, we're gonna get crushed. The first green shoots that uh, Jets fans see, and boom, Park Avenue gives you the Steelers coming off a mini buy. Like thanks, preach. Saints at Carolina. Can we just like skip this? We don't need to talk about this one. Panthers are two and a half point underdogs at home. Sure. Forty and a half is the over. Panthers. I don't want to watch it. Really, Panthers? The pan like they've been close in both games, and the Saints yeah. like shouldn't have won in Week One and had nothing for you in Week Two. Panthers are more lively. The games in Carolina, they're home dogs in division. I don't love it, but I'll take Carolina. I think that's the smarter play of the two. The Panthers have lost to the Browns and Giants, two teams that aren't good, by the way. And like they've yeah, struggled, they they've they've struggled mightily in both those games. Yeah, they could have won two games against shit teams and didn't. Yeah, the Falcons, I mean, the Saints had to scramble to save their lives, come back against Atlanta, and uh, they, they were just completely dead on arrival against the Buccaneers. I don't know. I don't love either team that much, but I think Carolina's a little friskier. You're giving me points in division, so I'll, I'll take them. Saints for me, Jeff. I think that in unless they're playing that weird like triple option offense that we saw from Atlanta week one when they were pulling out all the stops, we saw last week Fournette got 26 carries and had like 65 yards. You can't run on them. Yeah, I don't know. Out of principle, I feel like I got to just back the Saints here at a number that is shorter than a field goal against Carolina that might be as putrid as um, Pat is talking about. The Saints, I mean, it's a really ugly game, but they possess the ball. I don't know, some bad turnovers. The game got weird. I am i don't want to say I'm drawing a conclusion on Carolina, but I am too much of a preseason stand for the Saints to not be on them in this spot in That's week fair. three. And I don't really care to overrate anything that happened versus Tampa Bay last week. I, I just don't see where on the field Carolina, uh, a positional unit. Like you want to say running back is better on Carolina. I'll give that to you. McCaffrey's better than Mark Ingram because Kamara's probably not playing. But like, where are the Panthers better? Offense? No. Offensive line? No. Defensive line? No. Linebackers? No. Secondary? No. Special teams? I don't know. No. Maybe I want Mayfield. Maybe I want Mayfield over Winston in this game. Winston threw the game away. You That's what he does. He's been doing it his whole you, career. You I, and I like Winston. Jameis. You, you hate and Baker I like and Jameis. love Jameis. I know, but maybe I just say in this spot, I trust Baker with two and a half points at home more than I trust Winston right now. Okay. So Saints for everyone besides Tim Coins going with us. Raiders. How hurt is Winston? I mean, he has like four like broken discs in his back or something like that. I can't That's believe the Taysom played. Hill show. And then so that's I a actually, real problem. Well, no, I don't think Taysom Hill. I actually, I'd like, I would like Carolina less if Taysom Hill played. What? Were you like, like Ian Book? I like Taysom Hill. You did like yeah, he, you did you did like Ian Book. That's true. Well, that wasn't any any weapon to hand. Let's beat the Dolphins, sort of thing on a Monday night. But anyway, uh, Vegas <laughs> at Tennessee. Tennessee's a two point dog. At home now. Tim, your Super Bowl champions are now underdogs in week three at home to the Raiders, who are 0-2. 45 and a half is the over-under. Yeah. Are, you, are you changing your Super Bowl pick yet? No, no. I'm not moving. It's week three. I mean, I'm, I'm not moving yet. Much like Jeff felt obliged to take New Orleans, I am obliged to take Tennessee here. Uh, that spread moved quite a bit just based on one game that just completely got away from the Titans. The Titans were favored yesterday afternoon to win this game. Now they're underdogs. Uh, I'm and Titans are 0 2, but I'm not worried about them because, like, Indianapolis is garbage and Houston and Jacksonville have real problems. I mean, maybe they'll don't know those two, but the, the Titans haven't played either of those teams yet. So, like, they still have everything in front of them. The Raiders, I'm just far more concerned about. They lost two very, very winnable games. The last one, they're up by a million points and they let the game get away. Uh, and in that fashion, I'm worried about the Raiders. They could just combust here. Uh, if things don't go right, I don't know. I'm gonna. I mean, so could the Titans. Though to be fair, they could combust too. But everyone else in their division is so poor that I'm less worried about them. I'll take the Titans here. I don't love it. I don't love it by any means. Taylor Lewin looks like he's going to be out for a while. He was carted off against the Bills. Bud Dupree left that game. No word on whether he's going to play yet. It's a short week. Oh my God! Do you know who else they lost on Monday night, Tim? Who? Kick returner and friend of yours, Trenton Cannon. 
cannons to the left of them. Cannons to the right. <laughs> Do people get that? No. I mean, I guess if you're 30... Eight years old, and you spent every day watching Fresh Prince. Maybe you do. <laughs> God, that's funny. Jeffrey, the poet, slam poet, Jeffrey the <laughs> Jeffrey Butler. <laughs> so, Coin likes Vegas. Tim likes Tennessee. Jeff, at a principle, I feel like I should take Tennessee based on what Tim said. Like their favorite. This is like a four point swing after the Monday night game, but they did sustain like real injuries to key players for them. What I want to know is how long till my guy Malik Willis is playing quarterback. I was so excited when he came in. Could be pretty soon, Pat, because the next gauntlet for the Titans, especially if they lose what feels like sort of a pick em game and a desperation match for both teams against the Raiders, I believe upcoming for them is the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Bengals, the Eagles, the uh, the Packers. And, and in that, I think they have their two Colts games. Uh, you know, you could, you could debate the Colts-Titans situation, but uh, so... Their record could be horrible, um, you know, and pick them to miss the playoffs in our inaugural back to the future. And I got to say, I had a lot of fun researching who I'm going to use for our back to the future uh, pick, which is airing on uh, the, ha at the hammer. Yeah, the, the hammer dot bet. If you're looking for more content from Jeff, Tim and I, that comes out on Wednesday mornings as well. It's Tim versus Jeff. And each week they have to add a new future bet for the NFL season. We're going to compare portfolios by the end of the year. Tim's pick of Aaron Rodgers, 30 to one most passing yards last week might not come true. <laughs> Last week was poor. It didn't. We didn't work out. But whatever. It's a thirty to one. We're taking. We're taking uh, swings. We're just. Gonna so, take, we only need to connect on like one, and I probably win two at the most. But it is. Uh, you know, Pat, you hit it for me. It's the short week. It's the injuries. I so desperately want to be able to back Vrabel at home, but it's the injuries and how they match up. You're going to use lose Lewin against Chandler and and Crosby oh man yeah it, it could get bad again in Tennessee and the pumpkin that I've been waiting for them to become for almost a year and a half might just be here I'm picking the Raiders to get off the mat in a game I, I don't like either team I like Vegas so you're taking Vegas as well yeah okay so Vegas for everyone but Tim if, if you have a good week here you're gonna be on like first place because I think we're Jeff and myself are keep agreeing, and the coin keeps siding with me. Me and the I have to tail the coin. The coin's you know twenty two and ten against the spread. It's the way that we need to go here. It's the opposite of Matt Rule's career coaching record. <laughs> That's pretty good. Laptop game of the early slate: Houston at Chicago. Good lord, a game you dare not miss. <clears throat> this is this is the hinge game. I feel like in my Bears to have worse record bet. If the Texans can just win this. Like the Bears have to go. Justin, they won't even let Justin Fields try to pass. It's kind of insane to think about. And the Texans have been, I mean, I don't know how good the Colts or how good the Broncos actually are, but the Texans have been competitive with both those teams. I feel like they should win this game. So I'm taking Houston plus three on the road against Chicago. Houston and Pat are going to agree again. All right. So Houston, Houston. Yeah, I like, um, I like the Texans a lot here, actually. Put them on the money line parlay? No, not enough to put them on a money. We're trying to win a free money, not free money. But they the Bears shouldn't be laying three points into anybody. I still believe that. The Texans have played scrappy football the last two weeks. This line reflects what it should have been hung at in week one, not what it should be hung at in week three. It should be Texans by one or two. Uh, I like the Texans here. Per I do wonder what the Texans defense will look like Pat after playing two statuesque quarterbacks who aren't mobile. <laughs> 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 sorry. Sorry. I mean, they played Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson. So the, <laughs> these two veteran statues who yeah, you're right to move sideways. Russell like rushes for three yards. Is he mobile <laughs> anymore? Snickering. This is some criticism I was making in the preseason show that I thought Russell Wilson's mobility had been sapped considerably. He's just not that good anymore. He's so like it'll be interesting he doesn't to have see it. how Houston will play with a quarterback who who does have a, a certain level of mobility that you know the Texans certainly have yet to see this year. Um, but it's a two horrible teams. I'm picking the compete level. 
And and um, I gotta I I'm with Pat on that Bears thing. That was my last week add on after the Bears won Week One in my futures uh, bets with Tim. So this does feel like a a bit of a hinge game, and the number would completely flip if we're able to score this Houston Houston win. Just looking through it, like you've just it's two weeks of DVOA, so it means nothing, I guess. Unless Tim, there's someone you really like at the top, then you'd go all in on it. But Houston's middle of the pack. Like Houston's okay. Their defense is this like is presaging hey, where I'm going to go on our hammer show. Actually, oh, there we go. So Houston the Texans is, are involved. Oh God, you're picking the you're picking the Texans to win the division because Jacksonville is the number two team per DVOA. By the way, I'm not going to say what I'm picking, but that's not what I'm picking. All right, but hammer, no more. I'll leave, leave it for the SEL. The hammer dot bet is where you want to go to go check out Back to the Futures with me, Jeff, and Tim every single Wednesday. And Chicago's like Chicago's offense is like okay, like they're somewhat efficient at running <laughs> the ball. But if that's the one thing that Houston's done a really good job of the first two weeks, like they slowed down Jonathan Taylor, mm-hmm. they slowed down the Broncos' rushing attack. What happens to the Bears' offense if they, if Houston stops the run? Are they just gonna like take knees the entire game? I don't know. We won't know because we're not going to watch any of that game except when it shows up on Red Zone because a punt got blocked. <laughs> I mean, maybe Davis Mills and Brendan Cooks light it up. Who knows? Anyway, that brings us to the midway point of the show, which means it's time for a mini version of Cust Corner. Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Conan, it's Cuss Conan, Cuss Conan. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about, and this is sort of, again, when I say I see myself as sort of a representative of the people, this is an instance where I feel like I need to stand forward and sort of give the people some advice about something they may not know. Uh, and it's something I did not know until recently. But like, Wagyu beef is like the best food on earth. And if you have the opportunity to bu- have Wagyu, you got to go for it. It is so good. It is so delicious. It's marbled in all the right way. If it's cooked right, it just like dances on your tongue and dissolves. You don't even need a you don't even need a knife to cut it. It's so delicious. I now know that it, it, it you, you can't pass it up. Yes, it's not the cheapest thing on earth. Fair enough. But like if you want to live the good life in any way, shape, or form, Wagyu beef must, must, must be a part of the good life. What do you think, Jeff? From the guy who brought you sleeping on the couch might hurt your back, brings you Wagyu beef is good. No, no, good. That's a that's offensive to call it good. A Big Mac is good. This is transcendent. So from the guy from the guy who brought you popcorn sandwiches comes Wagyu beef. <laughs> Wagyu beef is so good, folks. You gotta you gotta try it. So Jeff, many of you out there haven't. I guarantee that many of you out where there. Where have you tried it? Did Burger King release a Wagyu beef burger? <laughs> no. So here's what happened, Jeff. We went out. Uh, we had a friend in town last Wednesday night, and we went out to the uh, the nicest steakhouse in town, which would be like the. Uh, ninth best steakhouse in Toronto from where I previously came from. Either way, very nice place. I really like it. And me and my friend ordered, I think I ordered the ribeye and he ordered the strip loin of Wagyu. We were just like, well, let's do this. Let's spend 200 bucks on a steak and uh, buy a bottle of wine, get super hammered. That's why I was so hungover for the Thursday show with Rob and Cam. But I, I pulled a little prank on Tim is I cut him off like three ounces of my 14 ounce. That was like a that's probably like 50 bucks worth of steak right there. And he ordered like a nice steak, but I gave him that before he started eating his steak. And he was like, oh my God, this is so good that it ruined his nice steak that he had ordered. <laughs> like a, like yeah. shoe leather, like a doorstop, <laughs> like a doorstop. And it was good. It was really good. I'm not like fine beef. If I had just eaten that, I would have like you know, sung its praises. But folks, Folks, I'm not joking here. I wouldn't steer you wrong. <laughs> I would not steer you wrong. You got to get the Wagyu. You just, you got to get, you got to get it. Life is too short. You only come around this way once. And you don't want to go through life never having the Wagyu. You don't. You just got to, you got to have it. And you'll believe, as I believe, that it might be the tastiest thing on earth. It's just so good. What did you think 
like, did you just think like Big Beef was pulling a fast one with these crazy Wagyu prices all these years? I assumed it would be slightly tastier, but sort of like the higher you get in something, sometimes like it's not exponentially better. It's just slightly better, but you're paying exponentially more to get slightly better. No, not true. Not true. It's so good. You're so good. Folks, get the Wagyu. Just get it. You'll not regret it. You won't regret it. I, this is a tip from me for you. Get that Wagyu. Get it. And like our friend said the other day, and he was right about this, don't buy it and take it home and cook it. You don't know what you're doing. Unless you have a Michelin star or went to the Cordon Bleu, you don't know what you're doing. Get it done at a restaurant where it'll be seasoned appropriately, cooked appropriately, done just right. Oh, like you got to get the you got to get the way you just got to get it. you got to get it jeff would it surprise you if i told you that tim dipped it in hp sauce oh. i did no such thing he didn't i did that. no such thing i am one of those guys that when i do go to a nice restaurant i am like one of those i don't know if it's a pretentious thing but i'm just like however the chef recommends i have it is how i want you to bring it to me Oh, that was oh, so, that was so the good. that was the end of three rich guy corner. Uh, let's move to something more Tim speed here. I saw you put out a poll on Twitter of given the choice, do you prefer O Henry Kit Kat Reese's peanut butter cups or other? What what was behind you putting this out? I was kind of annoyed at Reese's today. Not like really annoyed, but like I was going to the grocery store and like for some reason here in early September, mid September, they're selling all this Halloween candy. And like Reese's peanut butter cups, which are like this iconic shape. And like everyone knows exactly what they look like. Like they're busy selling them shaped like bats and like they're sh like pumpkins. And like, what are we doing here? Like that's an inefficient way to deliver the peanut butter cup. Now, I think Reese's peanut butter cups are kind of overrated. They're not bad. I like them. They're okay. Kind of overrated. But like, what are you doing at Halloween messing with the most iconic shaped, perfectly sized treat? For Halloween, the single now single Reese's peanut butter cup. Now, if you went to a nice neighborhood or a neighborhood where people liked people for Halloween, you get the full five candy bar. That's what you should be giving out for Halloween. But that's a month or so down the road for us to have that discussion. Anyway, the it's perfect. It's a great shape. Why are they playing around the shape? So I was annoyed by that, and I was like, I wonder if other people have seen the sort of stuff that Reese's has done and are annoyed similarly. I mean, I'm not like annoyed that I wouldn't buy them anymore. I'm just curious. I want to get the pulse of the people onto like the most popular bars these days for Halloween. I think the most popular chocolate bars for Halloween here, at least where we are, are in some order, the O. Henry, the Kit Kat, and the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, where people are, what the standings are uh, these days. I can't I remember. I can't, I, I can't remember seeing an O. Henry since Henry yeah, Rodriguez o played for the Expos. Oh, they're all over the place. Oh, they've, Henry's they've got a their weird, own little box. weird... Um... Oh, Henry doesn't belong in that class. No, you like, don't think so? I'm pretty sure that Oh, Henry got no. discontinued in the United States like 10 years ago. Well, I can't speak to that. I don't know. I know we still have them here. You still get them. So if I would, what should I have replaced it with? Sn then? Snickers or Mars? <laughs> Coffee Crisp? Like, I don't no. know what the most popular I, I just gave you the two answers. Okay. And anyway, uh, I actually purchased one of those bat-shaped ones. You know who really loved Why? it? Why? Do you know who really loved it? Who? My fucking kids, Tim, who Halloween fake candy is for. Not you. Okay, but Halloween's not for another it's six It's Halloween. Weeks. It's Halloween candy. They like some candy. They it's like, like they, the they, Easter. They, they, they do the same. They make yeah. bunny shape. Yeah. Who gives a crap? Like, what is the, the problem? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. But they it's still not, it's not sell for the you. Other normal you shapes. You're not the one who should be putting on the mask and going door to door trying to collect candy at fucking Halloween, pal. Nobody asked me who I was when I put on the mask. That's no. Bane. That was actually a really good Bane. Too. Uh, I just think it's dumb. Don't play around with it. Like, you have iconic shapes. Yeah, Stick they're, to they're, what you they're know. Not, they're not getting rid of them. What do you care? It's it just a bothers me. It just Tim, bothers me. In I the, have in the, I believe in the industry, they would call it a seasonal activation. <laughs> That like, very well may be. That does sound like the sort of corporate speak. It just annoyed me, okay? Like a little bit. Like not even a ton. It just annoyed me enough to say. So that would be like being annoyed that Santa shows up on the Coke can. No, no. But if they changed the shape of the can into Santa Claus, 
then we got problems. No, not really. You would be all oh, collector's item, Santa Coke. I need it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, you seem to think I'm far more pathetic than I am. I'm not that way. Really? I mean, eight, uh, eight years of this show would indicate otherwise. I'm also very distressed. I went out to get Sprite the other day and was freaked. Now that they've gotten rid of the green bottles and they're all clear now, you have to like look real close to figure out whether you're buying Sprite or Sprite Zero. Because, like, you can't tell anymore. I can't. Green bottles were the dead Are giveaway. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's, like, a distressing thing now. Like, you would need to look close to make sure you're... Distressing. Like, I shouldn't have to, like, work to buy my soda. And I've got to work. I'm I'm surprised you worked at all. While standing in front of them, you didn't, like, call a, a, a 17-year-old over to tell you which one said zero on it. Well, I'm capable of... Re- I'm, I'm capable of still reading, Jeff. I can't... But- I can't, besides you who just said it, when was the last time, Jeff, someone said, you know, I really want to go out and get a Sprite? I was looking for Sprite yeah. for Tito's. So it's the I perfect mix. For, for, um, like you were looking, is the you were, perfect lo- You were looking for it for mix. What were you looking for? You were, you were going to get a Sprite. No, I was going to get a Sprite. But that's not the reason <laughs> most people purchase Sprite. No, exactly. Sprite is universally known as the world's best mix. This is what I'm saying. That you didn't use it for mix. You just want. You were just like, it's three o'clock. Need to have a sprite. I don't know how. Well, many I wanted were a sprite that. zero. I wanted a sprite zero. We'll put it in the same ballpark. I almost feel like it's like I think I may have said this before. Like sprite zero feels like not even like pop. It's like a, like a fruit drink almost. It's like refreshing. It's like you feel like you're repl- like you're doing something healthy, even though I know you're not. But like it's clear. There's no caffeine. Uh, I don't know. Sprite feels like you're like doing it right, sort of thing. Okay, we're seven up is heavy and gross. Last thing, because uh, we're just going to fly through some of these ones. What was this thing that you retweeted about NyQuil and chicken? Uh, many people have tweeted about this today. Apparently, there's this fad on the TikTok, which is people cooking chicken in NyQuil, which, uh, unsurprisingly, is incredibly unsafe, and you should not do that. Why is it unsafe? But I, uh, apparently it's chemically can make you incredibly sick or something. Uh, you should not do it. Don't even consider it. But like, I, I, I it's just sad. I, no, I disagree. I told Paul that we like, have a whole trend of people doing this stuff. I'm just saying that like, this sounds great, Jeff. I'm not going to lie to you. Like some people smoke different types of weeds, different strains of weeds, take an edible so they can go to sleep. I think Pat just wants to have a nice meal of chicken, some NyQuil, boom, out for eight hours. I, I, I get it. 100%. I would say this would be a perfect base to my elephant tranquilizing <laughs> after bad charger games. Oh my goodness. Like if I can start my system with some NyQuil um with some NyQuil glazed chicken, that would that would so this work is like very the... well with the other ingredients that are going to follow. So this is like the going to get the double quarter pounder at McDonald's before a heavy night of drinking because you know you need to have that set of ba- that base. I would get something a bit more substantial than that, but I see your point. A little more. I think the last time you had a double quarter pounder, bud, it's incredibly substantial. Yeah, I'm just going to eat like a loaf of bread and I'll be fine. Well, you could do that too, I suppose. Go to Subway then. I, listen, if you're going to go out drinking, maybe all bets are off the table at this point, but I know I'm probably just going to get something really shitty afterwards that I'll probably just try to like limit the eating out that I do beforehand. See, I always feel better eating before drinking rather than after. Yeah, but you don't Maybe that's strange. But you, don't, but you don't really drink that much. But when I do drink and like I do have a hangover, I'm not hungry. Yeah, but there, uh, there, I, I'm, I'm not talking about a hangover here. I'm talking about, well, I'm still drunk. My idea is like, you know what I should get? Everything on this menu right now at 2 a.m. <laughs> oh, that's not usually my move. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is probably a very unpopular opinion and could probably say more about me and how I like to do my binging. And that's really the only way I drink like a beer with a dinner. It's not for me. Like when I drink, we're just going to oblivion and I don't drink a lot. So often, and it probably doesn't take a lot. That being said, I got no problem leaving like the gullet a little light. Like it just lets me feel the night harder. (laughs) 
<laughs> when we when we were in college, there was the one like club that everyone went to, and it didn't close till three thirty a.m. And directly across the street, and these are duller drinks at that point too, which is now illegal in that city uh, because there was too many fights, people like basically going brain dead from spending twenty bucks and having alcohol poisoning. But there was a twenty four hour Greasy Spoon Diner open directly across the street. I would say my hit rate on that, Jeff, at three forty five a.m. was a thousand percent. Oh, yeah. After the night of drinking, it's a full on gorge. But I don't like people like to get a base. I like let those drinks like hit me as hard as freaking possible. Like, I don't mind going in without a loaf in me. Ah, so here's the thing. If you want to put NyQuil on your chicken, you can do that. You're just not supposed to boil the NyQuil. That's the problem. Because once you boil it, uh, the concentration becomes like it changes the properties of NyQuil and even inhaling the vapors can make you sick. So what you need to do is basically cook the chicken first and then just kind of like glaze it over without boiling it with the NyQuil. And then you got yourself a nice no! hearty meal and you're sleeping that for 12 terrible. hours. Oh, Paul has a question. Uh, suggestion more. So, uh, why don't you just mix the NyQuil slowly, like dipping sauce with your with your barbecue sauce? Oh, oh just just you know, Paul. NyQuil it up. This is Paul, terrible. Paul, have this you done terrible. this before? I mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I like it. I- I'm pro this. Just don't. But boil don't it. do it with your wagyu. Leave your wagyu as is. <laughs> Get your wagyu, folks. You won't regret it. You will. You'll thank me. You'll thank me. Maybe someday you'll order your own. Wagyu steak, Tim. Next time, while I well, look, I didn't think of it. Next time, how could I pass it up? And what do you mean you didn't think hey, of it? Tim. I ordered before you, and the other person across from you ordered before. Yeah, but I already made my you. decision. I hate switching your decision. Once you're at a restaurant and you've made the decision, uh, you don't get swayed. That's a bad idea. Stick with what your gut told you to go with. Tim. Yes. You realize you like come on here. And you give advice that's essentially the same as I took this international flight. I flew first class. It was amazing. <laughs> no, I don't think that's this at all. No, yes, I don't. Is. I think this is stuff that people You're telling need to know. people that the like highest end thing is good. Well, because it does not all because it not always is. Like it's good, but it's, it's substantially better. I'm here to tell you folks. It's like I know for a fact it's substantially better, and you'll be happier. Until you look at your bank account. Well, yes, it does cost money. But look, it's, again, it's, it's only money. And you only come around this way once. And it's really good. Okay. Sounds like a Tim Too Rich claim. Tim Tim Too Rich's advice for the peoples out there. The real man of the people take Tim. It's a man for the, I'm a man for the people. I like to, like, look, look I'm also known. I stoop down and I go to the places that Jeff calls the nut low all the time. Uh, you know. Yeah, I notice you haven't you haven't commented on uh, Burger King's pretzel bun situation. I uh, well, you know how much I hate pretzel buns, and I think they're the the, the absolute worst buns imaginable. Uh, it, it should be against the law to to have pretzel buns. I hate them. Uh, so no, I haven't commented on them. The burger itself looks delicious, and that mustard sauce looks absolutely awesome. Well, when was the last? Uh, did, have you had the pretzel bun yet? No, I, I've had pretzel buns in the past, and well, I don't like pretzel buns. Tune in Sunday Night Live as we did the Frosty Week 1. The taste test we no, did this you week would, no. is going to be the Burger King pretzel bun burger, I guess. Live on the show, Tim will give his food review. Sure. I mean, I'm sure I won't like it. I'm sure it'll be. I'll be miserable. Sure, he's going to scarf it down while he says he hates it. Just like the Frosty. This Frosty is disgusting. It was. You going to stop eating that? We had to shame you into stopping. Did we oh, have a I can't drink yet? Pepsi Crystal. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Loved have it. A he loves Pepsi Crystal. Admit it. Uh, we don't have a no. guest lined up for Wednesday. It might just be me and you unless I can find someone. We'll find somebody. I asked Gabe, but he never got back to me, so I don't know. We'll, we will find somebody. Gabe might be too stressed if there's still <laughs> games going on. That might not be worth it. <laughs> Fair. All right. Oh, here's a game that uh, that Jeff can be stressed about. Jacksonville at the Chargers. The San Diego Super Chargers are favored by seven at home. I guess Herbert's playing, and the total is 48. I think the Jags cover this game. Jags, second best team in football, Jeff. 
the Jags, uh, you know, the spread's sort of gone from nine to seven, ten to seven, Pat. I guess that's a byproduct of the Jags looking great and some unknowns on the Charger injury report. Um, like the quarterback? Yeah, I don't. And we can get into that. I could still consider pressing civil action against uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon for going to commercial as <laughs> Herbert lays lifeless. Um, I'm still I uh, have not forgiven that aspect of it. I don't really know what to make of this. Um, do you know the day I, I they still didn't post the video of Staley's media informal media scrum <laughs> from Friday know. and it's now Tuesday and I haven't seen my coach speak. I guess Charger social media is too busy working on drawings of anime. For next year, hey, you got to cater to the seven real football fans. Hey, you got to cater. The they're they're on the West Coast, man. You got to cater to that hentai crowd, and they're certainly doing that. Yeah, I mean, why man. don't you tweet at them and ask them for that video? You should. It's you effective know, in the past. I, you it's just be, you just better hope that the Jags and Herbert or the Herbert doesn't get tentacle fucked by the Jags. That'd be a tough scene. Then it'd be just offside anime that the team would have to come up with. So I will say the Chargers, for what happened in terms of the injury situation in the Thursday nighter from Herbert to Lindsley to um, right tackle Pipkins, the injury news, at least at this moment, has been as positive as it can be. Now, they aren't obligated, and nobody from the coaching staff has called me to give me an update on Herbert's status, and they're not obligated to make an injury report till Wednesday. So I am still kind of flying in in the dark and nervously await a tweet that has bad news. I don't trust Chase Daniel to get a first down, let alone win a football game. So if he plays, that will be hyper concerning. Um, I would like to add that, um, you know, in something that, you know, I looked hard to find a way, Pat, for our, our fun little extended feature on the hammer to include the Chargers. But I couldn't. Do you know why? Because if you threw a baseball or mock threw a baseball or mock punched me in my face, I'd flinch like a bitch. But you know what didn't flinch and went the opposite way after a loss? Chargers futures. The to make the playoffs, the to division, the win total is 11 and a half. Shit didn't flinch. Now, something must have happened in that football game. One, most importantly, Herbert stood up. Two, it seems like you can end any conversation about last year's defense. Uh, and three, people think that they're, they can certainly prove that they might be better than the Chiefs. So they're one and one. And off that loss, the futures didn't flinch. I might have flinched, but the future market on the Chargers didn't flinch um, one bit. So my heart was kind of reassured about that. They're better defense. They're better offense. If Herbert plays, I'll bet the seven. Like, I bet every game, and we're 2-0 against the spread. Uh, but I like what I'm seeing in Jacksonville. But this is, this is, they got to have this one. They got to have this one. So, uh, yeah. And I'll be, yeah, there's Jewish holiday Sunday night, too, which is really goddamn annoying. Purim? No, I wish it was Purim, because that one wouldn't require uh, anything from me. I think you'll be enjoying some. Yeah, I believe you'll be enjoying some apples and some honey and a Chargers victory. Um, what, I'm going to pick hold the Chargers. What, what is what is the holiday? Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Okay, it's oh. a new year for for the Jewish people. Oh, okay, they don't have calendars. Yeah, it's another one of our like I don't want to call it made up holiday, <laughs> but you know, there's people in the workforce that you know some like uh, don't you know because uh, I think. Uh, yeah, you know, people can take mon Monday off. Well, don't don't worry. The queen died. Yeah, in, in the country that we live in, every Monday is a holiday now. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is that. I guess is um, true. But extra time. Hopefully, the charges are healthy. Big Jags win. I'm a little worried about how dominant their pass rush looked, but my quarterback isn't a ball of dust either. All right, so Tim, where are you going? I will take the Chargers, but not super confidently. Let's hope that in the biggest moment, Herbert doesn't throw the game away like he did last week. Um, I think he probably won't. I think he'll not make the crippling mistake. 
I think they'll play well, and I should be interesting. It should be interesting. I hate games that start at five oh five. It's the worst time spot. Uh, you know, for, if I feel bad for Jeff, like he's his game starts and the 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 first set of games aren't over yet at all and so like it really gets and sometimes with some of the sunday ticket feeds you don't even get your game on time until like whatever game is in front of it is over like it's the oh five like the 405 eastern time is just a worst sometimes my life depends on an intern putting me on an alternate yes i believe it it's a terrible my heart and soul depends on if an intern realizes i got to be on an alt channel for 15 fucking minutes I think the Chargers win by seven, eight, nine points, something like that. I like the Chargers here, but not super aggressively. So Chargers for everyone, including the coin, besides myself, who's going to take Trevi in Jacksonville. Rams at Arizona. Arizona's a three-and-a-half-point dog at home against the Rams, who looked like, okay, last week. They cannot block. I just saw the stat come out that their line is averaging negative yards in terms of the rushing game. So they're getting negative push on the ball at the offensive line of scrimmage. Hence probably why they pass so much. Three and a half seems like the right number, but I know they were your super lock last week, but they should have got beaten by 30 by Vegas and just ended up winning that game, Jeff. Yeah, it was a really weird game and an incredibly frustrating game because Oakland was taking a ton of penalties and then converting all these third and longs to like the backup tight end early in that game and then all of a sudden do you know what what cars average yards per pass attempt in the second half was 2.8 and that's how you set up the comeback boys um i don't know it's hard to want to back either team right now but it does kind of feel like um I don't know. Murray's been horrible against the Rams, but it does kind of feel like I'm expecting a close game. I'm going to take Arizona, but I, I, I hate this game. Yeah. It's going to be a no money game for me. I just do not believe in the Cardinals after watching them for two weeks whatsoever. I think the Rams get right here. And I think that the Rams can do this by more than three and a half, Tim. Rams round out the four team money line parlay. Ooh, really? I like the Rams here quite a bit. Uh, Arizona got super duper crazy lucky to win that game last week. They looked terrible the week before. They don't play the Rams well. Um, the, I, I feel better about their money line than I certainly come close to feeling about their spread because, as you mentioned, they can't block and the Rams can't run. That's a concern. But nevertheless, they're definitely the better team on the field. And Aaron Donald is going to make uh, Kyler's life a nightmare. Um, at least that's what I'm anticipating. That's what I'm predicting. I think the Rams win this game. Uh, pretty smoothly, and yeah, I don't have much faith in the, in the Cardinals at all. Uh, a, a fluky, I mean, they still should have lost the game in overtime if Renfro can hold on to the football. Like even then, the, the the holding penalty to keep the game going that was there was no hold. The fact that they didn't call a hold when Kyler ran around for forty five seconds on the two point conversion and the offensive line who had to have held a thousand times don't get called like well, did you did a you a lot of weird well, things if we do the breakdown where did you see the hole at it's just it seems just about impossible okay. for them as someone who played offensive line <laughs> and tackle Christ. football i can tell you that it, it's it's very difficult to like not hold for that long on a play it just seems next to impossible anyway everything broke right for arizona this is not a particularly good football team. The Rams are pretty decent, so I like the Rams. Green Bay at Tampa Bay. Tampa is a two-and-a-half-point favorite, although Mike Evans is suspended. There's no Chris Godwin, maybe no Julio Jones. Leonard Fournette's playing on one leg. It's just skinny Brady, slender man at quarterback with offensive line injuries against the Packers team that's, like you said, have looked very uninspired, but they did everything that they needed to do on Sunday night despite not – playing what I hope is not near the Ray game. I hope that was like their C minus game and beat the crap out of a bad team. This one's really interesting to me because I feel like the splash, it's down to two right now as I look at it. I guess money's coming in on the Packers. But Jeff, I don't think that this game is going to be close. I think it's a blowout one way or another. I just can't figure out who. So have you seen all this buzz about this total, Pat? 41 and a half? Okay, apparently it opened at 52. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I was, you know, just following um, a friend of ours, Connor Allen, over at a four for four. Who you guys, who you do the show with, the prop show with later uh, in the week. He's been sort of tracking this total. This total opened at yeah fifty. 51 and and now it's down to this 41 and it's Brady versus Rodgers. I mean, I know there's injuries or suspensions, but that seems like, you know, that's like Brown Steelers sort of a crap on a Thursday. It, yeah, it's like number. the right number. It is the, like the right number though. It, is there cuz I know that we're getting like remnants of a hurricane sometime on the weekend. Is there a hurricane in Tampa? A hurricane? Maybe No, maybe. it's just that neither team have any pass catchers. And great Both quarterbacks are old and have looked bad for two weeks. Like great defenses too. Yeah, sure. And although the Packers have such a terrible run defense that it's embarrassing. Like if Fournette plays, even if he's not 100%, he's going to just rack up yards. And I'm going to take Tampa in this game because I think when it, when push comes to shove, Green Bay's got bigger problems. That but Tampa's defense, Tampa does something better than any of the four units uh, of the four units. Tampa does something the best, which is play defense. Their defense has looked fantastic for two weeks. I think they're just going to do exact. It's going to be similar to that New Orleans game. It's just going to be a lot of running. Brady's not going to make any big mistakes. Uh, I think Jones is going to play, and I think he's going to have an impact in the game. And I think it's going to end up being like 20 to 13 or something uh, for Tampa. So I like Tampa here. I like Tampa too. Just give me the choice between the two, Jeff, right now with how these teams look, even with the depleted offense. I thought the Packers defense was going to be awesome this year and it looks like shit. <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I just feel like should be the only guy who goes on, on the Packers. I did notice looking at the schedule and I'm only like one of the weird people that look at this uh, CBS essentially waving a white flag for four o'clock this week by only having Jacksonville at <laughs> LA chargers. <laughs> Pretty much saying Fox, America's Game of the Week, Brady's Rodgers. We're not trying to counter-program that with even NFL football. <laughs> I'll take the the Packers. Everyone seems to be in love. I don't want to say in love with the Bucks, but I haven't seen a single person pick the Packers here. I I I will take them in what I expect to be another very um close. Well, I shouldn't say very because the Bucks killed the first week. I think this could be a really close game. I'm with you. Like, <clears throat> I think if I was, I'm picking Tampa Bay. I'm not putting any money on this game. I think if the the right side to bet probably is Green Bay, but I just, I, I mean, they're my Super Bowl pick, so this is real problematic for me. I think they can get it together once this team coalesces just a little bit, but it just doesn't feel like they're at that stage right now. And I still think that they're the class of the North, so they might not need to get it figured out till three quarters of the way through the season and just this, this it's funny because Brady is now back with playing with the New England team that he left to go to Tampa Bay that's what this is on offense. until people until people get until people get healthy until people get healthy but like this week in particular at least he has Brady Rogers is still trying to figure out this offense with a bunch of jabronis on it Brady at least has experience with this that's true good point I don't know if it's an effect for Tampa be weird for Tampa to have a look ahead spot but uh Tampa you know a lot too. of a lot of the anti-Tampa talk, you know, besides focusing on Brady's marital situation uh, before the season kicked off or as it kicked off, was their tough schedule of Dallas, New Orleans, Green Bay, and Kansas City, which also I mentioned that that game is is next Sunday night, Brady-Mahomes. Yeah, I don't think that the Bucks are probably going to win that one. But we'll see once we get there and see how they look this week. So round to Tampa, except for Jeff, who's taking the Packers. Hot Atlanta at Seattle. Atlanta is a two-point dog in Seattle. They're favored by two. It looks like Geno's still going to get a chance to cook here with Pete Carroll. This is my super lock, Atlanta. The cover in Atlanta Falcons. I think they win the game outright. However, when I looked at the numbers, it's plus 105 on the money line. And the plus two, Jeff, is only minus 110. Uh, that leads me to believe that the plus two is actually better than the money line here based on the fact that they're calling each point seven and a half cents, which in every other game, it's going to be way more expensive to buy a point than that. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am very much um, believing in sort of what you were selling preseason about the Falcons, Pat, although they are 0 and 2. I'm not going to follow you onto the super lock, uh, the super lock plank here, but I've, 
followed you a lot today, and this is one of my favorite games this week. Atlanta, I'm going to lay the points. Could be talking about w- both of these teams. I'm deciding between making uh, my future pick for our, our bonus segment involving either one of these teams in different directions. So that is still percolating in my mind. If you know where I'm leaning with Atlanta, you know I'm certainly picking them to win this one, maybe even comfortably. And Pitts is going to go off. I agree. He's going to go off. I know there's so much criticism about that insane comment. I'm not here to win fantasy games. Yeah, you just want to use your best players and scheme them open, sort of in the same way that everyone who drafted an elite receiver in the top 10 does that. Yeah, well, it's been different as well. Like when you watch the games, it's very clear that defenses are taking the opportunity to take Kyle Pitts out of the game. Why do you think that Drake London got 50% of the team's targets last week? They were like, let he try to beat us, Drake London. We are making sure Kyle Pitts doesn't do anything. That was the game plan. And it, I mean, it worked till it almost didn't because the Falcons almost came back and won that game. But I think it's just really funny to justice of position with them. Nice call back there to Jeff with the Carolina Panthers. Your, your buddy is Tim who, you know, they lost two games close against really trash teams where you look at the Falcons. They should have beat the Saints, who we think are like an all right team, and they could have beat the Rams mm-hmm. last week, who we think are a really good team. And like Seattle sucks. Like they're bad. You sold me. I like the Falcons in this game too. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm there. The coin. I'm there. Seattle's got nothing to be uh, uh, exciting about. Okay, so Seattle's being taken by the coin, so that's that's something for the coin. Well, the coin knows things apparently. Sunday Night Football, uh, tune in live to Sunday Night Live on the Pat Mayo Experience an hour before Sunday Night Football starts as we are the pregame show that you need to watch. Niners at Broncos, Broncos, a point and a half derg at home. Russell Wilson, not looking good. Nathaniel can't hack it. What bonehead decision is he going to make this week? We'll find out as we tease the game in and... I mean, do you have an early pick of who's not going to score first touchdown in this game, or do we need to wait till like five minutes before? That's that's when you truly get the curse going. Oh, I have no. Well, I, I dispute that that whole conceit, but no, I'm not giving out that stuff on this show. You need to watch the Sunday night show, folks, for me to give out who I don't think will score a touchdown in the, uh, the first in that game. To be fair, right? I mean, I, I sort of referenced earlier, like Russell Wilson. Reminds me of that line from The Simpsons. He's like Donkey Kong. He's not a draw anymore. He doesn't seem to have much. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? You, you, you know what happened with Donkey Kong? He still got it. That's actually fair. That's actually fair. <laughs> and you know what? Um, R- Russell Wilson has still got it. Denver wins this game. Everyone San in San Francisco the, was my Super Bowl pick. In the world is picking San Francisco in this yeah. game. <laughs> I am too. Of course, I am too. Uh, super old time, old school Super Bowl rematch, 49ers Broncos. Many have done it a couple of times. Um, I like the 49ers here quite a bit, actually. I think they're the better team. I think this is, this is the price is the, the line is priced correctly. Denver has looked feeble in their first two games. They went up against the Texans and the Seahawks, the sweetest of sweet draws you could have, and are lucky to be one and one. Uh, I don't know. I'm concerned. I don't think they got it. I think the Niners, Debo should have a field day. Um, I just really, really like San Francisco here. So San Francisco is your super lock, but you didn't put them on your money line parlay? I, they're not my super lock. Oh, I thought you just said that they were your super lock. No, no, I really like them here. Oh. They're not my super lock. Okay. So no, no, no. San Francisco for Tim and the coin. Jeffrey, Denver for me. Who are you taking? Well... You can say really dumb things as a new head coach and the media can destroy you, like destroy you that you would think there is no coming back from. But you look at what we saw with Dan Campbell and the crazy shit he said, and you look at what we saw from Nick Sirianni and, you know, being a a green thumb and his plant growing and what he said. And as we are recording this, these are two darling coaches that are probably both under 15 to one to win coach of the year. You can say almost anything and get away with it, but you cannot, as long as your actions are fine. Um, But if you do what Hackett did, which is, you know, maybe say some of the right things, but act like a total moron, (laughs) there's no coming back, man. There's no coming back. I seen this shit with Anthony Lynn 
And I tried to think as a fan that it like could get better and he can like learn, but it is the most elementary things you think you are prepared for or thinking about on the precipice of being a head coach and finally executing it. I am going that, to pick that, Denver. That, that said, I picked Denver. I knew it was coming. <laughs> no, I'm picking that. De- they're a one and a half point underdog at home now, Pat. I know. San Francisco's taking over 80, 85, maybe even flirting with 90% money. I love Pozzola, and he hates, I heard him say he hates when people talk about advanced lines because, and he's right that in a sense, the limits on an advanced line are so small that they're not essentially taking a ton of action. And they're just there as, you know, if you love football and you love the bet and you want to make a bet, we have lines for you, but we're not going to let you demolish us or break us on a bad number. So what you're saying but that I, I, so you're saying that it's like studio 54. They're just there for you. Those advanced lines. Sure. But I still respect them. And I think cause smart people set them. And I think that it is a fair barometer to see where a line goes. This is crazy. The Broncos would have been flirting with a field goal favorite a week ago. Now they're a point and a half underdog. I hope Denver loses, but my, my brain is telling me that I've got to pick them in this spot. Uh, Yeah, so I'm picking Denver, a home underdog on Sunday night as the world is turned on them. That doesn't mean it's going to fix anything that's wrong with their head coach, but I'm picking them here. Maybe he'll get a lobotomy. Maybe that will help him. Do they do that to people anymore? Or shock treatment? No, I don't believe they use any of those therapies any longer. Well, maybe they need to do it. Maybe he needs to go see a phrenologist and He he can lead him down the right direction. Tim, do you buy into like the Shanahan family revenge game? No, I, 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 I honestly, I hadn't heard that uh, since uh, the last six seconds when you mentioned. I didn't know that was a a narrative that people are mentioning. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying Denver sort of crumbling a little bit. I can't say that I'm not taking a little bit of joy in it. Because this is the finally the year that you jumped off and it's actually working, not going the other yeah. way. Yeah, I wasn't particularly in love with them. I thought they had some problems, and they continue to look like they have problems. I mean, I left them for the Raiders, who have other problems, but not these problems. Monday Night Football is Cowboys at Giants. Oh, this dropped to two and a half? Damn it. I didn't bet this yet. I wanted to bet this one. Giants are favored by two and a half at home. 39 and a half is the over-under. Maybe Cam wasn't wrong, Jeff, when he said that Cooper Rush is basically as good as Dak Prescott. I laughed it off, but who knows? One thing that is actually legit about the Cowboys is this defense, though. And I I really wish the three was still there. I love the Cowboys in this game. I think their defense makes Daniel Jones look sillier than he normally looks. And that somehow the Giants will win and be 3-0, and and I just it, my brain's going to explode because they are fucking terrible really not prepared to pick this game um at this moment and i've already sort of put some praise on well like cowboys to me almost the win of the week with with cooper rush um give me i'm gonna take the giants at home and think cooper rush isn't gonna win a road primetime start i he, guess but i don't i don't win, win a road bet it win a road primetime start again didn't he do that last year in minnesota on sunday night football yes he yes he did yeah he did he did that was the night of uh i was at the chargers patriots game that that's that it was halloween it was halloween night um that loss yeah a gross game and it's only gonna get real money because it's on monday night football I, I, I especially like Dallas in this game. It's so funny, though, that we just talked about Nathaniel Hackett going to Denver. Like, the biggest thing that I've seen from, I mean, Barkley being healthy certainly helps. The offensive line looks a little bit better. But, like, Dayball looks like he's a real coach, Tim. Maybe. We kind of thought he would be. The The opponents have not been the most talented so far, I suppose you could say. Why? But I thought uh, Carolina was great. I like Carolina. I like the Titans. and But I guess... They still haven't been really challenged. I don't care. I'm not playing points with the Giants. I hate them. I don't think they're any good. I'll take Dallas. I don't like Dallas very much either. I think both these teams are trash. Da- but Dallas's the, D is actually between, good. Nah, sure. Dallas D is, is fine. 
But Dallas is the Dallas is also coached by one of the very worst coaches in football. That's worth at least a point to me. Uh, and it, it, like I feel, anyway, I'll take Dallas. I don't love it. Don't love it at all. But I just refuse to lay points with New York Giants. But hey, who knows? Could could the city of New York be five and one going into October? I mean, I don't think so. But uh, that be a that be a fun story as the as the calendar turns over. I just watching them play it. It, it breaks my brain how they can how they've won the first two weeks. Like I just I I don't understand. Some that. teams you have to understand that there's always one or two teams every year that get extraordinarily lucky, and maybe the Giants are just going to fall backwards into nine or ten wins, and like that's just how it's going because the NFC is so bad that just there's a path there for them to do it. I hope not. I hope this team's trash. I don't like the Giants, but anyway. You don't like the Giants? It's not like uh, you know, they're, no. they're your New Jersey siblings. Well, no, I, I I don't don't like the Giants. I'm not a fan of the Giants. I don't, and I hate. I think they're the team I like watching least on TV. Like at least when the Patriots or Dolphins or Bills are on, there's like I, I have emotions that I can go through. I just uh, just I find watching the Giants, and you watch them so often because they're always on Brian. I just ugh, just the worst. I, I never get excited for their games. All right. Well, that brings you're us just to... upset because you're second fiddle to them. Yeah. Well, sure. They're the NFC team in New York. <laughs> well, let's get to the Super Bowl. The more then. like blue blood franchise in football in 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 New Jersey. Yeah, of course they are. Super locks for week number three. I'll lead because I am undefeated in super lock so far. It was between the Falcons and the Bills. Spoiler alert for the best bet show for me. It's going to be Atlanta and Buffalo one and two as my two favorite bets. I'll have to find a third one coming in. Maybe I'll make it the Jets again because they came in. I, no, no one has ever run better on a Sunday, Jeff, than their gold pick and silver pick being the Dolphins and Jets against the spread. <laughs> But I'm taking Atlanta plus two. And you're taking Cincy minus five? Hmm. Cincy. Where, where's Cincy. that light coming from in your house on your face? Oh, geez. That shit's back? No, it's not there. Pat's yeah. just saying that to mess with you. God, these <laughs> stupid people touched my... I had my windows... It's been happening oh, on the okay. spread pick show because of the time, I guess. That yeah, the, the time difference. Right? In the room that you're in, you should do like I do in my home studio. Yeah, no, I had it blacked I, out for... We went to Canadian... Paul and I went to Canadian Tire. We bought a bunch of those moving blankets. They're like 10 bucks a piece. Just boop, 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 black out the room, dead in the sound. You're good to go. Yeah, um, I'm going to take the Bengals, but I'm kind of scared of it now that we've sort of talked through the whole show. You're open. You're allowed to change your super lock if you want to. No, I like I like the Bengals. I think it's going to be a lopsided game. Okay. Tim, to you. Detroit plus six. Detroit plus six. Also, we'll look ahead a bit for the, the Vikings. I didn't mention it, but like they got to hop on a plane and go to London. So, I don't know. Jeff hates that pick so much, he left. Well, he's got, the, <laughs> he's got people to yell at for moving his windows. <laughs> Do you think they actually uh, moved no. his windows? Like they showed up and they they cut out new windows and moved them just to fuck with them? That would be amazing. Um, yeah, Detroit just is a really good spot for the Lions. That's too many points. Uh, Vikings on a super short week. Vikings having to go to London next week, and you're getting six against an explosive offense. The Lions are the great thing about the Lions is that you can you can't be out of the game because they can score in bunches, as we saw against Philadelphia when they got down big. Oh. You can never be out of it with the Lions. Remember I told you about flying direct to Munich for the Munich game? Yes. That flight is now gone. They are not offering a direct flight from here to Munich anymore. Oh, no. No, that That's ends like this, this week. So, I mean, I suppose we still could go. I don't know if I want to do a two connection to Europe for two days just to come back and film shows. We'll see about would, that, though. Would, you could do Montreal to Munich, though, right? What? You could do Montreal to Munich. I don't live in Montreal. I, then I have to fly. No, but that would only be one. That's only one connection. Yeah, but I don't want to start doing connections and for, for a two-day trip. Fair enough. I understand. I do, I feel like you don't because no, no, I understand. I said that, and then your proposal was, "Hey, this other place, which is the opposite direction well, of Munich, why don't you fly there and fly direct?" I suppose. Okay, well, I suppose you could do it in Heathrow too, but yeah. Yeah, they also got rid of that one for right now. Oh, okay. Glasgow, Dublin. 
You think that they kept the Glasgow flight, but they got rid of the London flight, do you? I don't know. I'm just asking. You didn't use any common sense behind that? I just was asking. For what purpose? I just wasn't. I wasn't sure. I'm distracted by Jeff. I can't help it. <laughs> no, I'm fine. All right. That well, won't be here next week. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's perfectly fine. I just thought it might be like fucking with you. No, it won't be here. It wasn't here before. I think it showed up last week. And yeah, I said someone moved the window. No, that's a lie. But I did screw up in that about a year and a half ago, I needed new windows in the house and I kind of cheaped out and only did half of them. Like, ah, well, it's expensive. We'll do incredibly expensive how much freaking windows are. We'll do the next like half the job next year, year and a half. It's like 40% more for the same job. Is it did inflation? You, did you cheap out so you could go buy some Wagyu steak? No, I just ch- ch- just like thought I'd kick a can down the road a little, and you know everything went upside down, and all those materials, everything. It's forty percent more than I paid a year and a half ago for the second half of of windows. Um, and I guess the the guy was here looking at that one. Uh, I have no fear. In like three weeks' time, it'll be pitch black at this time of day, Jeff. So, you're not you're not wrong. But yeah, I got to put like I, I blocked Thank it out. Goodness. I didn't buy anything fancy. I just put like stuffed a couple pillows blocking it. That's my um, that's my fix. Uh, did you ask for suicide? And I ranted about my windows. I'm sorry. No, no, I I haven't asked yet. So uh, we are we had to restart Survivor because I won in week one. It was over. So we restarted again. I took Denver, squeezed by. Uh, Cust and Phantom of the Opera over there took the Green Bay Packers in week two. So, Jeff, who are you taking? <laughs> I'm taking the Jets. i oh, sorry, the Bengals. The Jets? <laughs> the Bengals. That's a very aggressive rebuy Survivor the- pick, sir. I'm taking the Bengals, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm taking the Bengals. There's I'm no- going to take the city of brotherly love. The, the brotherly love place? Yeah, I'll take the Eagles. Ugh. I'll yeah, take... it ain't too pretty. But, I mean, you think Buffalo's going to win? I, I do. I, 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 am, I am going to take Buffalo. I was just trying to see who the biggest favorite was. The biggest favorite this week is actually the Chargers, which is crazy. I mean, it's not crazy. I They're a big them. favorite. I can't but... pick them Can't pick them until I know for sure who's playing quarterback, right? Yeah, I'll take the Bills in Survivor. Recap your money line parlay, and I do have the official record here. You're zero and two for the year, fifteen and one hundred and five. The race to a hundred games under five hundred is on, sir. Buffalo minus two twenty five, Philadelphia minus two sixty five, Cincinnati minus two fifteen, Rams minus one seventy five. That's a plus three fifty eight fourteen parlay. Three fifty eight. Yeah, that's what it's suggested to, 358. All right, you win this one, you get out of the hole for the year, sir. That's right. So it's a, it's a relatively conservative one. I like where we're at. We don't have to play with any points this week. We just got to get W. I, I, I don't think that anyone has ever described a four-team parlay as pretty conservative. It is a sliding scale compared to what I'm usually cooking up. It's conservative when you consider he's not putting his free money nightcap in San Francisco on to like double that sucker up. I'm not going to put a team that's nearly a pick em in a free money parlay. But you called them free money. I don't think I did. I said I really like San Francisco, and I do. I think the Niners are the play, but at the same time, nope. We're going with these four. These are the four I'm most comfortable with. I'm, I'm just going that way. All right. Well, I'll be back with Robin Cam on Thursday's show. And I'll be back with Tambo live in studio for Friday's show, Saturday show, live from my home studio. I'll break down all of the rankings, the updates, and the props for the week, all on Mayo Media Network. So please subscribe to that right now. Smash the like to the episode. Jeff Feinberg will not be on Sunday Night Live this week, but you know who will be? Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That's not my name. And I really don't want to eat one of those pretzel burgers. Yeah, but you got to do a food review. You've never had one. How do you know if it's good or bad? You might love it. Oh, it can't possibly be good. Oh, yeah. You're just going to take one bite of the pretzel bacon cheeseburger and just put it aside. I'm certain of it. I, I suspect that's what probably will happen. I, I, I will have to show, show tremendous willpower 
to to do that. But uh, anyway, hopefully, I have a question for you. Should I start Derrick Henry in fantasy this week, Pat? Oh yeah, ne- never <laughs> is the answer to that question. I like that it wasn't. Hey, should I start Nick Chubb over Derrick Henry or someone over Derrick Henry? The question was, do I start Derrick Henry this week? Like over no one? Sure, let's go for it. Stupid fucking questions. Uh, I'm doing a live chat on Sunday mornings for these stupid fucking questions that it's funny because it's only like 2% of people that have the worst questions in the world. Remember when that was a segment when we first started the question, we first started the show, Tim? The worst, the worst question. question in the world. <laughs> It'd be the worst question, Jeff, that I would get all week on Twitter about like start sits and fantasy. And we just mock people. You get some pretty nut low questions so i can only imagine what you would quantify as the worst one you receive in a week well i don't get as many anymore because i've really got out of the season-long fantasy game and gotten more in i mean back then like that was the only thing that people were really doing is like 2013 so i'd get like honest to god i had an intern answer my start sick questions while i was live on air at fantasy the first year because i would legit get 300 400 i would get capped by twitter for the amount of responses that I was giving out, then I had to go over to like the fantasy account to answer people's questions. Well, I wasn't answering them. The intern was just using the ranking sheet that I put out to answer the questions for me. But like, I might get like four on a Sunday now. Like people, I just stopped responding to people. So they stopped asking. Who knew? That was the way to do it all along. Me. Tune in Sunday for who not to play in the first touchdown on Sunday night too. That's true. And like, I'll answer the start sick questions on the live show. That's a reason to watch the live show Sunday morning. Then watch the live show Saturday or Sunday evening to get the free money bets and recap the week and download the podcast and all that fun stuff. Thank you all for watching. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.